we've converted uh, ener electrical energy into light. So now let's convert light into electrical energy. And we'll use solar panels. And solar panels are semiconductors. So I have to explain to you about semiconductors. Uh, this is an example. I've got a silicon matrix. And you see how it's arranged. There are four, four contacts with each silicon with each other. And this is why. Here's silicon. Neon fills its shell, its electron shell, and I start filling up with silicon. One, two, three, four. Silicon's got four electrons out there waiting to be filled. I like to fill them up because that way it can have eight and it'll be full shell. So it bonds to other silicons, and each of them is sharing four electrons. So they're perfectly happy. Life is so good in the silicon world. That's why silicons make nice looking crystals, because they form an orderly array, because of their electrons. Now, we're going to dope these. Not gonna, we're not going to slip something in their drink. We're just going to put some impurities in them. Now, let's go on either side of silicon. Notice over here, here's boron. Boron only has three electrons to share. And phosphorus has five electrons to share. So let's stick the boron over here. Boron, all right? Now, this guy right here, this silicon, it wants something to connect to. Now, let's put that in black because it's a silicon bond. The boron can only connect to three. So this silicon's left out in the cold. On this side, we're going to put in phosphorus. Now the phosphorus has five bonds, right? It's got one, two, three, four, five electrons in its valence system that it'd like to share. And so the phosphorus, it's going to hook up to the silicon here, this one, two, this one, three, this one, four, and it's got this extra electron just dangling out there. Now it's all neutral, but it's got this extra electron. It doesn't have anything to bond with. Over here, I've got a silicon. It would really like something to bond with so it can be complete. Even though it won't make, even though it'll remove the neutrality of the system, it'll make this side positive and this side negative, this electron would like to jump over and bond with that silicon. It takes a certain amount of energy to do it, right? Because uh, they're neutral. And they're going to have all of a sudden a charge difference if they do it. So it has to have a certain amount of energy. You've learned already that photons have a certain amount of energy. So you can design your system. You can put your substrate in the silicon. You can dope it the way you want with different materials. You can design it so it takes a certain amount of energy for this electron to jump out and make it over what's called a threshold voltage and make it over to this side. So maybe you design a certain solar system that's designed mostly for lower energy photons. Make it easy to jump over. Or maybe you're looking for something that runs off of higher energy, blue light or UV light. Uh, then you design a system that's got a higher threshold. You put in materials that make it harder. It's got to hit, be hit with a much higher frequency photon to shake that electron loose, giving it enough energy to jump over here. Whatever you do, that's how it works. It's got to have a certain minimum energy to jump across. Well, that's why semiconductors work so well for, uh, for computers, because they're either on or off. If they don't get enough energy, they don't make it. And if they do, they, they make it. Well, what happens now? This electron has jumped over to this side. And now this side is negative. And this side is missing an electron, and it's positive. And now it's also connected by a wire, and it runs through some type of load which let's call it your house. I've got a negative charge here, positive charge here. That's going to cause current to flow. The more negative charges, the bigger the current flow. Uh, that's how semiconductors work, uh, roughly speaking. And uh, that's how solar panels work. The energy from the sun, or from any kind of light source, is used to knock electrons, give them enough energy to jump this threshold go over to the other side and run a current. Uh, currently, uh, I think in the 70s, the efficiency of these 
uh, solar panels was around 2%. And it upped it to around 5 to 7% by the time the uh, International Space Station was being planned, which is why the earlier panels have that efficiency. Uh, now they're, I think they're getting ready. Commercially available solar panels are, can be up around 25% or more now. And the costs are coming down because more people are using them. The, as the energy costs of different uh, alternative sources, uh, as our primary costs go up, these alternative sources, they're, they become more comparable. People use them more. As they get manufactured more, they become cheaper to manufacture. The processes get better. Shall we do an example? Sure. We'll just go backwards. Let's try this. Let's say we've got light coming down on the surface, solar panel. And uh, the panel is. Um, Let's see, I'm thinking of the one by the ferry. Maybe it's uh, 20, excuse me, 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters. So let's say the area is 20 times 20 is 400 square centimeters. Now the flux of light, the irradiance of light at this, oh, at this uh, latitude, because the sun's coming at a more of an angle through more atmosphere, so it's a little bit less. It's about uh, 1,300 watts per meter squared above the atmosphere and get up to around a thousand as it penetrates through the atmosphere. Let's say around here it's about 700. So let's say we're looking at about an irradiance, a solar irradiance of about 700 watts per square meter. Now, let's see. So let's find out what the input power is. The solar energy coming in. Well, the solar energy coming in is going to be about, um, let's see, well, it's a radiance times area. I should actually write down the, work, the first equation for you, just so you can see what happened here. Starting with the radiance is power per area. I solve for the input power. That's a radiance times area, which is going to be 700 watts per meter squared times 400 centimeters squared and uh, there's one square meter for every 10,000, 1 times 10 to the 4 square centimeters and I'm going to get 28 times 10 to the 4, I'm going to get 28 watts, 28. Yeah. So that's my input, it's 28 watts. Let's call that A, right there. B, let's say my efficiency is 25%. What's the output power? And that's going to be electrical this time. It's just a reverse of the last example. Um, efficiency is output over input power times 100%. So, the output power is equal to the input power, let's see, multiply both sides by input, efficiency is still on top, divide both sides by 100%. So that's going to be 28 watts times 25% over 100%. which is going to be 7 percent cancel 7 watts now that's not much but consider the solar panel is like this and like that and what you'd normally do for your house for example now there are roofing shingles you can put your entire roof well at least you'd want to do the side facing the sun you can uh, use solar panels for the whole thing so you can increase your area by quite a bit if you had uh, 20 foot by 20 foot, well, if I say 20 foot by 400 foot, that's 800 square feet. That's two, uh, that's a lot more than this. So you, you can't power your house off of this um, in combination with the grid right now. What they're really waiting for is a way, people are working on a way to store that solar energy. Right now, mostly what you do is you use the solar energy, you store it during the day, or, or excuse me, you dump off the extra during the day into the grid, 
and then the electrical grid feeds you at night. So you feed the grid during the day, the, the grid feeds you at night. Um, you could get off the grid if we could get a better way to store that energy, convert it to something else with high efficiency so we didn't lose it. Um, so right now, solar energy, the things they're working on uh, are improving the efficiencies of gathering the light. Now, one way is to sandwich different panels on top of each other so that the ones, the waves that will penetrate most, the longer wavelengths, are in panels that are below the shorter wavelength panels that are above. So you can catch more of the light. Catch more of the light. That's, that's one way to do it. Uh, they're working on converting it better to electricity and then storing it. If you can convert it into some other energy and store it well, high efficiency, uh, then you don't even have to worry about the grid. Wouldn't that be nice?